the Creality Ender 3V2, one of the most ubiquitous printers on the planet right now. You can get them on sale for less than $200. Do they live up to the hype? Are they just cheap garbage? And would they work for your small business? We're gonna answer those questions and more in this first look and review at the Ender 3V2 right here on 3D Musketeers. But make sure you get subscribed because next week we are gonna be releasing the full unboxing and build video of this thing so you can see, well, if you can handle it. Let's make awesome. First thoughts on this printer, the build, kind of not the greatest experience. The spool holder is in an absolutely terrible position and I can't find a better one on the printer. I'm gonna keep trying though. Uh, the parts are honestly higher quality than I was expecting. And at $175, which is what I got it for on sale, I, you know, honestly, it's a pretty good printer. We're actually gonna be printing a Benchy here very soon you guys will see that in a time lapse so you can take a look at it not one of the nice fancy ones i don't have any of that set up for this printer but not a bad experience the bed leveling kind of sucks the build plate's not my favorite and i did cut myself on these bed clips so watch out those bed clips are a little rough the bed is clean the printer is put together it did not power up the first time, and that is because it is set to 230 volts from the factory. So just make sure you slide that over to 115 if you are of the 115 volt persuasion. But, you know, overall, it comes with, you know, enough spare parts. Comes with a spare Bowden tube connector, comes with a spare nozzle, and one bolt of every type that it has. And you know what? It's not bad. It's not bad. Uh... We're gonna see how the print quality is. I, I don't like all the cable management or really I should say lack thereof. It does come with zip ties for you to do it yourself, but I do believe there is a better way to do it. We're gonna go ahead and start to print. So I guess we'll switch over to a time lapse and we'll be with you guys real shortly. See, this, is, this was my expectation. This is why I like printers that uh, have heat beds that auto level. And we're done. Uh, it took uh, two hours and one minute. Uh, uh, about 35 or 40 minutes longer than I like to see a Benchy, but whatever. It's cooling down. We're at 100 C on the hot end, 54 on the bed. It's not perfect, but it's stock settings from a random old version of Cura. None of this is surprising to me whatsoever. Ever. Th this is totally expected. But, you know, the print quality ah, it came off the bed pretty easy. Uh, pretty darn good. Um, the top down camera is not going to catch it. So I'm going to grab another camera. <laughs> they just multiply. I don't understand why my eBay buying habits multiply cameras, but apparently they do. We've got the bow line, which is pretty common. I can feel it with my fingers. We've got some overhang issues, definitely, actually not overhang issues, but retraction issues on this thing. But you know, overall, it's not bad. The chimney looks good. The circles are reasonably round. The bow is really, really clean, like really clean for a bow on a Benchy. Uh, so certainly impressed. It's got room to grow. I mean, that those Z-Zits, which this camera maybe won't pick up all that well. But, you know, it's not bad. I am reasonably happy, all things considered. And of course, with some slicer tuning, which is going to be coming in a future video, so make sure you guys get subscribed. But yeah, pretty happy about it. It is going to live. It's going to live right there on the set. 
uh, and you guys will be able to see it. Uh, yes, the pothos is still sad. It will go outside tomorrow. I, I promise. Oh, I, I gotta put the benchy back on the bed. <laughs> I'm impressed. As you saw from that video, it's not perfect, but considering the price of the printer, considering these are stock settings, nobody's messed with it, especially me. I haven't had a chance to, uh, get under the hood and mess around. I do not recommend this filament. I'm going to throw it away as soon as we're done with this video. I think a lot of this issue is directly from that bad filament. If we were to use something like the Atomic Gray, Light Gray V2 PLA, I think we would have seen better results and we certainly would have been able to see more of the problems that exist with this uh, printer because this is a semi-translucent material, which means it tends to hide failures and issues pretty darn well. The first layer, not the greatest, but that's more my fault for not having the printer perfectly level. But I do happen to like the bed texture, that glass texture does uh, come off on the model. Well, transfers to the model is probably more the right word. Uh, so I do like that, that's cool. Just some overall comments about this machine. It is stupid, quiet, unreasonable. I do not have any 3D printers in the fleet that are this quiet, seriously. The loudest thing on this printer are the freaking fans. And if you replace them with something that might be a little bit less efficient, you can definitely quiet it down. Maybe something from Noctua, or maybe we'll put a blowy Matron on it and see what it really does. The power supply does get a little bit warm, but it is totally self-contained and something that I don't think I mentioned too much. It's got a little storage container for all of your parts, which honestly, one of the cool features of this printer. Do you, do you not fit? Okay, those don't fit. One of the cool features of the printer because I lose my Allen keys all the freaking time and that makes it really easy to hold on to them. Are you gonna... There. It's in. I do like that. Cable management could be better, but they do include some zip ties for you. Spare parts are nice to see because, you know, you might need them, especially that spare nozzle. I, I, I do like the printer. This firmware is kind of meh, but there's lots of options for it. The scraper absolutely sucks. You'll need to sharpen it. But if you get your first layer right, yeah, it's pretty darn good. I am impressed. I am impressed. I thought this printer was going to suck. I thought I was going to rant about it. And I was totally wrong. This printer absolutely surprised me, but it's not perfect. We're gonna get it there. And it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm gonna give this printer like a B to a B minus. I think it's a good second printer. Uh, it's not a bad starter printer, but again, you really gotta figure out this time versus money conundrum and decide really where you want to stand. Me as a business owner, definitely not a good choice if you are running a business. But me as a hobbyist, my hobbyist side is glowingly impressed. Uh, if I was just looking at this from a hobbyist standpoint, I'm gonna give this thing an A. But if I'm gonna compare these two, even knowing that the Prusa Mini is considerably more expensive, this will get jumped down to like, you know, a B plus, and this is an A plus, extra plus, maybe another plus in there. The Mini has a lot of the things that I wish this printer had, and we're gonna be doing a whole series on the Ender 3. One, tuning it bone stock to get silky smooth 3D prints. So make sure you guys get subscribed for that. But then we're gonna start upgrading the ever-loving snot out of this, and if I can find another Ender 3 V2 at the same price or less, I'll buy another one so we can do a cool video uh, comparing them side by side. But yeah, again, we got a lot of awesome content coming for you guys this week. So make sure you stay tuned. We're doing the second TV update video this week. Uh, cause the first one didn't work. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I show that in the video because we haven't edited it yet, but it didn't work. But I can tell you I'm using the television as a blocking monitor for this main top down camera right now. So video two involves power tools and a lot more fun. So I hope you guys will hang out for that. But yeah, again, I really do like this printer. We have the entire unboxing coming for you guys next week. Um, I think that made the most sense. The unboxing and building of this printer took almost an hour long for me to do 
There were a lot of issues that I ran into and you guys will see them all in that video, but we didn't want to have a video that was too darn long. So hang out for that next week because the content calendar is already set and I don't want to push the television video to the next week. So yeah, again, I like this printer as a hobbyist. I freaking love this printer. As a business owner, I don't like manually level build plates. I just really don't like them. I had such a poor experience with the Wanhow 3D printers that we used to run that we no longer really looked at machines like this and I think I might have done myself a disservice. Clearly 3D printing has gotten a lot better throughout the years and I mean that was like 2014, 2015 when we finally started to cut all the Wanhow printers that we were running and started running Prusas. Um, but clearly Creality has solved a lot of those problems. I don't really like this firmware on this printer and there are some good firmwares out there. We're gonna show you guys how to flash these things in an upcoming video as well. We're gonna do a lot of Ender 3 content. So if you like your Ender 3 and you don't mind me complaining about some of the odd nuances about it that just kind of bother me as a business owner, please make sure you guys get subscribed. Um, but yeah, leave a comment below. What is your favorite upgrade to an Ender 3? Because I want to do a whole upgrade series. I want this thing to look nothing like it looks now. And if you guys ask me kindly enough, maybe we'll toss these nice uh, anodized black aluminum bars into the laser, which is suffering from the flat surface law. But I, 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 I don't have a lot of space here to store things. We're going to be fixing that soon. But yeah, maybe we'll slap it in the laser and like put subscribe to 3D Musketeers. But I have a feeling that first try won't look great. So maybe I'll do it on the back first. But yeah, I don't know, guys. We're going to have some fun with this. I do like this printer. I think at $175, just like a little bit more than I paid for it. This is a it's, a, it's a screaming deal. It's a screaming, screaming deal. But understand, you might not get it to run perfectly the first time. I do recommend this printer. We, of course, have links to it down below. Again, the entire build of this printer will be coming out sometime soon. So get subscribed for that. I will see you guys down in the comments. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. Little Ben Cheapo, a dozen float. Little Ben Cheapo, a dozen float. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know I had a lot of fun on the now four hours on set. But don't forget, we have the entire build for this printer coming out soon. So get subscribed for that. The playlist for that will be right below me. Right next to it is going to be videos all about hot ends because we're going to dive into this hot end and understand why it's good and why it's bad. Don't forget washing to your hands on coming up later. Get subscribed guys. I'll see you down in the comments. Tons of content coming soon. Take care.